Hi, everybody. Um, welcome to the Quarantine Concert Series. My name is uh, Kabir Segel. I'm coming to you uh, live from my parents' dining room. Um, it is 10 p.m. on the East Coast. My parents are asleep. We're having a party in the dining room. I'm so excited to be um, including and inviting one of my, uh, one of my, I guess, new friends, but an incredible artist. And before we introduce her, I just want to um, kind of share the the vision of this project is we're all kind of practicing social distancing, but that's um, not a reason why we can't play music and come together. And uh, this concert series is all about featuring great artists and helping them spread their vision and spread their music with the world because this is a time that we really need to be uh, coming together as, as I think as humans. Um, I also did wanna make a, a point that not only are the artists, um, um, I mean, the creative community at large are going through a really difficult time. I sent out an email about this, this um, concert series to some friends and a friend wrote back and said, you know, it's not just the artists, it's all the people who help like book the artists and the venues, this whole community is going through a lot of strife. And um, I wish there was more we could do. Um, but if you know someone who's sort of um, in the creative community, send them a note, see if you can help them and, uh, and be there for them. I think that's the most important thing is being there for folks. Um, so, with that, I want to sort of switch gears and introduce uh, the incredible artist. Uh, this is our third installment. And as some of you may know, I write uh, children's books. And I was talking with my mom, um, who again is sleeping upstairs. And, and she was like, you know, you should really include some, um, I write children's books with my mom. And she said, you should really include some great children's artists on your broadcast. And I was like, well, there's this one artist who I, who I really become like fond of her music. And that's Sonia De Los Santos. And when I first heard her album, I was just sort of like mesmerized with uh, the songwriting and the craft, and we'll get into that. But enough talking for me. I want to bring uh, Sonia into the conversation. Sonia, are you there? I am here. Hi. <laughs> Hola. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. My pleasure. Where are you today? I am sitting at home, <laughs> as you can <laughs> imagine. Yes. Yeah, and you're you're in New Jersey, right? Yes, I'm in Weehawken, New Jersey. All right. So um, before we get before we get into your music, um, if you can kind of give us a quick um, thumbnail sketch of who you are, where you're from. I know you're, I have a slide up here. So you're born in Monterey, Mexico. But can you kind of tell us where you've been since Monterey, Mexico? Yeah. So, uh, yes, that's right. I'm from Monterrey, uh, Mexico. Uh, hola a todos los que nos ven desde México. Saludos. Uh, greetings to everyone who's, who's watching from Mexico. Um, I've been in New York, New Jersey for the last uh, 14 years. Uh, this will be my 15th year. And, um, and I moved here wanting to just play music and act and see where life could take me. And I ended up uh, playing music with uh, a, a band called Dan Sains and Friends uh, back in 2007. Uh, and I started, that's how I started playing children's music and family music. And then many years later, I decided to sort of make my own project and um, and take this uh, children's and family music concept that I that I learned from from Dan, my friend and mentor, and bring it into the Latin American folk music world, uh, and sort of shared my story through that, and um, and that's what I've been doing lately. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so why don't we, we're gonna play a few songs. So you're gonna play a few songs for us. I'm really excited. Um, and I know I sort of hit you up sort of just a couple of days ago. I was like, hey, would you like to play? And I was so <laughs> glad you, resp you responded. So I know you haven't had a lot of uh, time to prepare, but I should say to everyone out there, I, I work with a lot of artists and Sonia is like a top class professional. She like, she's, uh, she like prepares, she's like on, on time. Like all the things that make a producer's life like really just that much easier. It's, uh, I gotta say, um, I appreciate the promptness and just the attention to detail that you have and even just putting this production together. But enough enough talking, uh, what song are you gonna play for us now? Well, thanks for having me. And yeah, this is, I'm gonna be really honest. Uh, I've been hiding under a rock in the last few days, uh, trying to, to see what I can do, What that would be the first thing I would share um, after, after you know, sort of changing our lifestyles completely. 
Um, and so I was really glad to, to, to get your invitation, Kavir. I'm going to start at the beginning. I want to start with a song. The first song I wrote for, for this project, uh, for my family and children's music project, um, the song is called La Golondrina. And, um, and it's inspired in, uh, in the memory I have visiting my, my grandmother, my abuelita, um, and learning about the birds that used to live in a little corner of her house. Um, I love those birds. And one day I went back and the birds weren't there anymore. And I learned that they had gone because they were golondrinas, migrant birds. So many years later, um, I found myself far from home and remembering this. And this is the song that I wrote, La Golondrina. By the way, this is my harana, and I'm playing a harmonica. I don't think many of you have seen me playing the harmonica, uh, but I'm going to give it a try. It's usually a violin playing this melody, but it'll be fun. Here we go. Yo hablo un, po un poquito, un poco de español, sí, pero claro. eres maravilloso, maravilloso. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was awesome. For those who don't speak, I, I'm actually uh, learning Spanish. I speak uh, Spanish sort of like Tarzan, but I get through it. For those who don't didn't understand some of the lyrics, what are some of the signature lines translated into English? Um, I'm talking about the swallow bird um, um, and, and about its journey saying that it was flying there and it will be back in time for next spring, which is when swallows usually go back to, to the place where they were born or they lived before. And then in the last verse, I say, you know, uh, roughly, um, I'm a traveler 
traveling bird looking for a, for a place to land. Um, you're gonna make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'll get tissues. The, I'll get tissues. <laughs> this is this is how I came to a foreign land. Um, but I mustn't forget that um, family is first, and I should always remember that. That's it. That's right. That's no. You're gonna make me cry now. Um, <laughs> I know this, my I know my mom and dad are watching and my brother is watching. Hola so. mama. Hola <laughs> papa. Um yeah. hey when you um think about writing a song, where does it sort of begin for you? Um and I know that's very open ended, but is it an is it a notebook? Is it um are you are you writing on your phone? Are you doing voice memos? How do you, how does the idea come to you? The ideas for writing songs come from different places and there's no no recipe. Sometimes I have the lyrics, uh, a chorus going around and then I try to find some music. Um, sometimes there's like a musical idea around it, but usually for me in particular, it starts with the lyrics. It starts with a with a with a at least a theme of what I want to talk about. And then I try to find the words. Um, the words for it and yeah i use a lot of voice memos to record ideas even if they're just a little melody here or there or some words that i don't want to forget um and then i use a lot of I, I use a little notebook and then i use the notes app in my phone also um, what what color is your notebook it is uh i love this kind of notebooks i'll show you yeah if you guys want to see my notebook They're this small. Oh. See, I like blank pages because I can, um, this is a new one actually, and um, because I can draw in them. Then for example, here's another one, a bigger one. I like this kind of plane and I use this for my lullaby, lullaby project with Carnegie Hall that I work in. So these are all songs written by, uh, by mothers I work with, um, yeah. And while we're taking while we're taking a tour of your place, um, I know that you share my um, sort of affection for snow globes. Is the snow globe there? There is one. We need to get the snow globe going. This Boom. Dunk. <laughs> What's in the snow globe? Is that a giraffe? Think. Oh. oh, a cactus. It's a cactus. Cactus, cactus. That's it great. It's like an oxymoron. Yeah, that's why I like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Awesome. Um, here. Awesome, awesome. Cool. What is uh, what will you perform for us next? So um, let's go to Alegría. My favorite track, the title track. <laughs> the title track of of our last album, um, and I wrote this song because. My mom told me that um, she always tells me that I was born with a smile on my face. And uh, and so I thought that when she said to me the first time, I thought that was so, so, so such a good memory to have. Right. So that I could go back to that memory and, and imagine Sonia and baby with a huge smile facing the world for the first time. And like and just thinking, why can I go back to that on the days where um where i just don't feel that happy or there's something going on um so yeah and fun fact a couple of days ago i called my mom in mexico and i we facetimed and um and i was crying because i do have um times where i cry too just like many kids out there and adults too uh, and and my mom said started singing this song to me and it just made me cry more but in a different way so um i'm loving this song um more than ever and that's because it it just it came all the way around for me with my mom so thanks mom for singing it to me Esto es alegría. if you want to sing along in the chorus you know what to do and you can move your arms can wave them, you can get your exercise. All right, I'm gonna start playing.
I was waving the you whole time. Were? I was waving just like this. It's like oh, this. Exactly. Yeah. The first time I heard that uh, track, I was like, what? Because it's sort of it's so like lovely, well written, and, and, and well, again, in my words, well executed. Um, tell me about um, Alegria, because when I saw who was sort of performing on it, mm -hmm. I saw some of my sort of people that I worked with, some great collaborators. Yeah. Um, and firstly, you know, Camilo worked on this too, right? Yes. Camilo uh, recorded this, uh, engineered the whole the whole album at, at his studio, and yes, I think we have a lot of friends in common that were somehow involved in this album as special guests too. So we were really lucky to sort of pull in some of our friends from the New York City community, the world music community, really, and um, and and you know we're we're so lucky we had you know. Many, 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 many artists like Samuel Torres, who's, who's a friend of yours too, um, Edmar Castañeda, uh, you know, Dan Zanes, Claudia Liaza, Elizabeth Dan, Dan Zanes is watching right now, and some of our uh, friends are like, like Falu, and yeah. hey, Falu, how's it going, Falu? By the hey, way, if you, have a, if you have a, a question for um, the maestra here, please ask, and we'll, we'll, we, uh, we love questions and uh, Joe Maylander says, woohoo, love that song. Um, and we have the whole, we're getting some great, great community support here. Um, how was it, how was it working with Edmar on, on harp? It was, it was, well, it was really, really amazing. You know, Martin uh, Bejarano, who is uh, my co-producer for the album, he wrote this song for his mom called Corona de Flores. He showed me. He showed me part of the song, and we kind of finished it together. Um, and and it was. It had this rhythm of curulao, which is a, a rhythm from from Colombia. And but we somehow heard a harp in it. And uh, and Martin said, "Well, let's call Edmar." And and it was my first time meeting Edmar actually. Uh, but he, but he's he's known Martin for a while, and so he made the call. And Edmar was like, "Yes." So. 
he came to the studio and recorded this song, Corona de Flores. And not only that, but both of uh, his son and, the, and daughter, Saudi and Samir, are some of the voices you can hear uh, in through, throughout the album whenever you hear children's voices. So especially in Alegría, and you can see them in the video. So Saudi and Samir, uh, if you're there, if you're, I don't know if you guys are listening or seeing this, but, um, but, but thank you, because you really, really made it for us. Yeah, uh, Falo has a question, which is, Sonia, what was the best moment when you recorded this album in the studio? The best moment. I think my favorite moment was when I had um, the four kids recording voices. We sort of set up, uh, Camilo set up the four microphones, uh, Melody and Isabella too, who are cousins of Sylvia and Samir. So there was this, you know, four cousins and they were all there. And there's a little video somewhere that I shared and it was just magical to see them um, reacting to everything and just being, being children and just being super happy um, and recording these songs with us. Um, so I think that was my favorite, favorite moment at the studio. Um, and, and tell me about the album cover. I really like the album artwork. Who did the artwork and how many designs did you go through to arrive at that cover? Uh, the artwork is by uh, a Mexican illustrator called Teresa Martinez. Um, I saw some of her work in children's books and I fell in love with the way she, um, she illustrates. So I reached out to her and, uh, and she made the cover. The cover was sort of my idea. I had this idea of me with the harana and sort of a world around me. And she did three different sketches with this idea and we landed on this one uh, and then she developed it. Uh, and hopefully we'll have more collaborations with, with Teresa um, soon. Cool. Um, you guys can see in the bottom left-hand corner, there's the album cover. Um, Sonia has merchandise on her website, Sonia de los Santos music.com. And you can pick up some great t-shirts, uh, obviously physical copies of the album. There's also uh, a tote bag, which uh, looks awesome. And the next time I go to the Whole Foods, on my splinter attack to get the, all the toilet paper I need and everything um, <laughs> just to survive this uh, pandemic. Um, I'm going to try to get one of these tote bags. So I encourage everyone to check out the merchandise. It's really, um, our website's great and, um, and easy to navigate. So if you like a good user experience, check out the website too. Um, I do want to talk about, yeah, of course, I want to talk about the, um, shared kind of Harocho family and community. Mm -hmm. but let's talk about that in the next break. Um, and for now, maybe we can move on to the next song. Yeah, so um, let's do a song that's, um, that's on our first album, the album Mi Viaje. Uh, it's a song that I learned from a, a version of Celia Cruz, uh, amazing Cuban singer. And um, but we, it, the song is called Burundanga, and uh, Burundanga, what it means is, it has many different meanings, but in the, the context of the song, it's a mess. It's something that's very complicated to navigate or solve. But in the song, I love it because it says that um, with, with love and loving one another uh, and sort of being at peace with our brothers and sisters, we can accomplish so much and fix so much in the world. And, um, and it has a spoken word part that's original that uh, my friend Caridad de la Luz, La Bruja, uh, wrote. And um, I'm going to uh, say it in the middle of the song. Um, the chorus says, Abambele, Abambele, practica el amor. So if you want to do this avambele and then hug yourselves and do a little hug during the chorus because we all need to hug ourselves <laughs> okay <clears throat> this is burundanga songole de aborondongo borondongole de abernabe bernabe le pego a muchilanga le echo burundanga le hinchan los pies porque son goles de aborondón
abuelos nos enseñaron que juntos debemos estar. No debemos pelear ni tampoco odiar. Un mundo podemos crear. Qué lindo es pensar así. Que juntos podemos vivir. Sin una pelea termina la guerra y nadie tendrá que sufrir. Todos somos seres humanos y nosotros queremos la paz. Si somos hermanos, unamos las manos. Juntos podemos cantar. La bandela, Si somos humanos, usemos las manos con el corazón. Brava, 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 standing ovation. Thank you. It's an, it's an audience of one here, but we have, you know, across all platforms. We have a, several dozen people checking this out. So um, thanks for tuning in. Yeah, thanks for tuning in, everyone. And if you have a, a question or a comment for Maestra Sonia, please, uh, please uh, ask away and I'll be happy to convey the question to her. Um, what were some of the of the, the signature lines from that for people who don't speak Spanish? Um. It, well, the chorus says uh, Abambele, which, um, you know, I recorded this song a while ago and no one has ever been able to tell me what it means. I think it's just a made up word. Uh, but the but the big message is Abambele, practica el amor. That means practice love. Um, defend your brothers because between brothers we live, the you know, we, we live better. Se vive mejor. Uh, and then the second part says practica el amor. Si somos humanos, if we're humans, let's use our hands with our hearts. So mind what you do, mind what you say, mind your actions, um, and that's how we're going to fix the world and make it better. Uh, awesome. Thanks for that explanation. Falo has a question, which is, do you um, think in English or Spanish? That's a really good question. Um, I think both. I think both depending on who I'm with, who I'm having a conversation like 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 right now, I'm not I'm not translating what I want to say from Spanish, which is my first language into English. So I'm just naturally responding, um, you know, in English because that's how I'm thinking about it. Uh, but if I'm speaking Spanish, then, yeah, I mean, it's 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 Spanish. I think I dream in both uh, on both Spanish and English, too. Um, so. Yeah, it's it's cool to speak two languages. Some days I really can't speak English. If I there's so many days where I'm not speaking English too much, then it, it's hard to get back. Um, I think it happens to all of us who speak a second language. Um, so I'm working on it every day. Awesome. What is the toughest um, part about writing for children? Because when I go and read my books to children, I find it terrifying um, because you know it's they're little humans and you have to sort of keep their attention and keep them engaged. So what is it, what is the challenge writing for kids? And also when you, when you perform, how do you, I, mean, I know the music is very engaging, but do you write with that in mind that I have to engage them? That's sort of the number one thing. Yes, yes to both. I think uh, first I, I write with, with the messages I want to convey in mind. And then second, I think, okay, how I'm gonna make this fun? <laughs> how, I'm gonna, how I'm gonna have my audience sort of follow me or give them something to sing along to or like wave to. So I try to incorporate as much as audience participation, obviously live. So sometimes when we're writing songs, I'm not just thinking about who's gonna sit at home and, and, and listen to the recording, but I think 
more about it of who's gonna be in a party and want to sort of like be part of the song and like what's what's in it for them uh, so that they can join. So I do I do think about that. Um, with some songs more than others, some others I say, all right, this is what I want to say, and sort of like I hope it lands well. Um, but but yeah, I do I do have all of that in mind um, during you know the songwriting process and then adapting those those songs into our live shows. Yeah, and what about parents? How do you think about the parents? Are you only exclusively thinking about writing for children? Because you know when you see like a great Pixar movie, it works on different levels, right? So the kid can enjoy it, but then when you see you know The Incredibles or something, a parent can like look at how that's a commentary on like society. So yeah. do you ever write with like double meaning in mind? I don't write with double meaning, but I do write thinking about people across different ages to, to be able to relate to something. So maybe it's not in the, in the exact words they, I sing about, but maybe it's something in the music, you know, using sort of like metaphors not not only in the in the in the songs but i mean sorry in the in the words but also in the music itself so having a little bit more of an elaborate melody maybe here or something that i think people my age who have kids would it would remind them of home for example um the generation of like our generation here in the united states um you know, I get so many ideas from 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 moms and dads who share with me what what works with their families, what like how they use the music, you know, cooking meals or in the car or anywhere they are. And so and so I have always I have that always in the back of my head. And I'm thinking, how how is this going to be sort of um, how how are parents and grandparents or children gonna listen to this song at the same time and how are they gonna be engaged and there's gonna be something for each one of them um i hope i i, I accomplish that in, in some of the songs uh, but that's 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 always the hope really yeah totally um a few comments here one alarcon says natalia and her parents from las vegas love sonia and uh, Dan Zane says, Felicidad, Sonia. Claudia also says hi. Ah, hi. Thank you so much for watching. So one of the, one of the things I wanted to share is uh, I worked on a project with Arturo O'Farrell, who performed last night. And it was a project at the border wall between the United States and Mexico called Fandango at the Wall. And I had no idea what I was like signing up for and taking on this project. It just seemed like we heard about this guy, a librarian at the border wall. And for those of you, you can see the, the border wall um, on the screen now. Sonia is standing in front of the mesh border wall in, uh, in Tijuana. And um, we started this project in earnest, and it's all about San Jorocha music. And San Jorocha music, I've been playing jazz music forever. And I always thought jazz was a really inclusive art form. And I, I found there was the San Jorocha community so inclusive and welcoming. And I, we went to San Diego to record this concert and record this album and this documentary. And I sort of got invited into the San Jorocho family. And when I came back to New York, I needed to borrow a Leona for the session. Mm -hmm. And I got entered and someone was like, just come by and pick one up. And we're, we're actually having a Fandango tomorrow. So I went to a park in the Bronx and Claudia Montez was there and uh, I borrowed her uh, and, and, and Patricia, everyone was there. And so yeah. you and I have been sort of in the, San Jorocho community. And when I first heard your music, I was so surprised that you were playing the Harana. And it was made by um, the Luthier Tacho, uh, and who's featured in our documentary. And I was like, wow, she's playing an instrument. So maybe you could talk a little bit about the San Jorocho culture, what it is. Maybe you can explain it to folks and why you like being a part of this community. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm glad you, you, you brought that up. I mean, the, um, the Song Haroto community here in, in New York, New Jersey, like in this area has been going strong for um, at least like I, I, I've known of it at least from like 2007. But like when I came, uh, I came to, I started, I brought a Harana from Mexico and, uh, and I started looking for lessons here in, in New York. 
Um, I landed on these lessons by Gabriel Guzman. Uh, at the time, their, their group was called Semilla. Then that was Radio Jarocho. I took some lessons with them. And sort of that was my way into uh, going to the fandangos that are this uh, sort of musical celebrations when people play this kind of instruments. Um, and it's much more than that. It's just a way to connect, a way to, to be with each other. Fandangos happen, um, you know, across the, the across the United States, across Mexico, and in other parts of the world. You've been to, to Paris, for example, to the Fandango. Um, and and then later on, I met I met my my teacher, my friend Sinue Padilla. I don't think I can talk about the Son Jarocho movement without mentioning him. Uh, Sinue plays Leona in our band, uh, and he's usually singing singing with me. And um, and so you know he's been teaching for a long time. So there's a community that take lessons that are are learning how to play the harana that get together on weekends, at parks, at community centers, and play songs that are uh, traditional Mexican songs. Um, there are some new songs, but it's but we gather around the traditional repertoire, hopefully to, to be able to continue the, the tradition uh, and also, you know, be with each other in, in, in any times. You know, it's, it's usually a, a place where, where people really um, find family and find, find a place to, to be so... It's wonderful. I'm a student of this genre. I love the harana. Uh, I'm not a master by any means, but I love to keep learning and I like playing songs on it, even if they're not song harocho songs. Uh, it's just I, I like the sound of the instrument. And, and yeah, this is made by, by Tacho Utrera. Uh, he's in, in, in Veracruz. Un saludo a Tacho si alguna vez ve este video. Greetings to Tacho if, in case he, he ever sees this video. So we're saying hello. Uh, Tatcha's going to see it because I'm going to send this to Wendy and be like, we get a, give a great shout out. And if you're looking for a Harana or a Leona, yeah. send, me a, send me a note. We'll connect you with Tatcha and Wendy. And in honor of Sony's performance, I'm wearing my Fandango with the Wall t-shirt today. Um, yes. Fandango Front Terizo started by our friend Jorge Francisco Castillo. And not only that, I promise, I promise I'm only going to show it because we want to entertain people. We don't want to Big people run away, but I also have my harana here yes. that, that Jorge gave me as a gift. Um, I only know how to play like two or three chords because I'm a, more of a bass player, but um, I wanted to be prepared for Sonia's concert. So I've got the merch, but don't get this merch. Go to Sonia's website and get her merch. And if you want a harana, let us know and we can hook you up with Tasha Wendy, right? Yeah. Yes. Cool. Of course. Awesome. All right. What are we going to hear um, next? We're going to hear a song called Mariposa Montuna. This is also a song that's in our album Alegria. There's a video of it, a live video of it uh, at the new Victory Theater, which we were in um, at the beginning of last year, like a year ago. Um, this song, we recorded it with jaranas. But we also recorded it with um, with gaita flutes. Uh, the gaitas are traditional flutes from Colombia, and um, so so in the recording, you if you go listen to the recording, you'll hear some flutes, the gaitas. Um, but I am going to play it with just the harana today. Um, it talks about butterflies. It talks about um, resilience of of butterflies being, you know, being um, so strong through through their journey five generations it takes for them to, to move from one place to another. And it's an homage to, to the migrant uh, butterflies, las mariposas monarcas. Mariposa Montuna.
Yeah. <laughs> Vamos, Mariposa. Mariposa. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't realize how far they flew. They fly high and they fly far. Yeah. They're like, you know, superhuman, not su superhero butterflies. Um, and not to get too political, but you know, the whole wall thing, there's an ecological consequence to, to um, pouring all that concrete into the natural lands. You have the borderlands are a great place for this indigenous creatures. And of that are the butterflies and butterfly preserves. So um, thank you for sharing that that beautiful song with us. Thank you. Yeah, we, we tried to, uh, well, in the last two albums, I've tried to include a, a song about a migrant bird, the migrant butterfly. And, um, and I've, you know, I've gotten questions about, you know, why, why do you do that? And uh, first of all, because I'm a, I'm a migrant myself. So in case you were wondering, I was born and raised in Mexico, and I decided to move to the United States uh, 14 years ago. So I can identify with that story, and um, and and so I like to think about it. Hopefully, some children um, will be inspired by my story too, or maybe maybe they'll understand the the journey of their parents. Uh, and that's a way to to talk about it, uh, talk about migration, and um, and I think. It's a, it's a great way to start the conversation, like music, right? It's a great excuse to talk about it. Totally. And by the way, um, Sinwaj has joined us. Sinwe? So, Sinwe. Oh, Sinwe. Hi, Sinwe. <laughs> hey, Sinwe. I know so we, 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 we were just talking about you, Sinwe. <laughs> welcome, to the, welcome to the Fandango. Yes. Um, and Sinwe, we've traded some emails too. Sinwe, I'm excited to to uh to chat with you one of these days and make something happen um tell me what's what's sort of next for you sonia and not in terms of like what album you want to create but in terms of artistically what are you thinking about what are the ideas that what are the themes that are ruminating in your head that you're like you know what i want to seize one of these like like, a, like butterflies flying around you want to catch one what are some of those things you're those themes you're thinking about right now well, uh, I've been writing songs for the for the last uh, year or so. You know, after we released Alegría, um, we've been writing songs that we've been playing and that uh, we want to record and some you know and put out in the world hopefully soon. Um, and but you know something I'm really excited about is to to figure out what to do artistically. I know I'm going to continue to sing. I know I'm going to continue to write songs. Um, probably have more time so I'm gonna get better at what I do I, I want to get better at the instruments I play I want to learn new instruments too uh, but I'm excited about collaborations and I'm excited about collaborations sort of in this new in this new, this new way of living we're we're sort of just putting our our feet in the water this week so we don't know what's ahead I don't know if I'll be able to go out and play live shows soon which make me really 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 happy um but i i want to be part of your lives uh to our fans that are listening listening and watching this uh and i am going to make an effort to continue to put out good content for you and uh, and stay connected i want to want to try to stay connected and see uh, find find what's you know what's more important what what what's missing out there and hopefully uh, you know be able to to give that to all to all of you and and keep writing from from the heart and um i don't know we'll figure it out who knows what totally it. totally yeah i'm glad um, i'm getting through this set right now and then tomorrow i don't know i'll probably <laughs> go back to writing yeah um i want to just uh, give a shout out to your father who's watching on ig uh, oh. instagram right now martin says give your father a shout out so yes. hola. Hola, senor. hola hola senor <laughs> Hello, senor. Um, and, you know, before you, you're going to play one more for us, right? Yeah, last song, yeah, I think. So before you play the last song, and I, I want to sort of end on a high note with, with you playing the last song. So let me just do the final sort of wrap up here. Um, again, this is the uh, quarantine concert series. Uh, we really appreciate Sonia being with us. Um, tomorrow is uh, Matt Mayer. I have no idea. Matt, I, I can see you're watching, Matt. I have no idea how you're going to match this. So... Um, but I'm but I'm excited excited to 
to have Matt on the broadcast tomorrow. Uh, we're doing these shows every night at 10 p.m. Um, Eastern, live from my parents' um, dining room in Atlanta. And we've started to book some matinee shows. If you're an artist that wants to get featured on the show, hit me up on Facebook, Instagram. You can reach me there. And um, also, uh, you can check out Sonia online at soniadelosantos.com. Check out her merchandise. Um, there's some tote bags. There's the album. There are the T-shirts. Um, I suggest you get all of them and have like a Sonia de los Santos day. And uh, and she has some great work. She's all over the place in the New York Times. Um, anyway, but that's that's the concert series. Uh, I hope you guys keep watching. And uh, Sonia, we're so excited for you for you to play us out. So uno uno mas. Yeah. Por favor. So before this this uh, this last song, I uh, just want to thank you, Kabir, for for having me. Thank you for for doing this. Thank you for for trying to help artists um, put our music out there. Uh, it's really it was just just a ray of light, you know, having having this outlet. And so thank you, thank you for everyone who's tuning in. Uh, thank you to everyone who's going to watch tomorrow morning. Um, and stay strong. We'll we'll get through this. And uh, hopefully, these concerts won't won't stop completely when things change, right? And uh, and we can still we can still see each other. I want to play "Esta es tu tierra." This is a bilingual version of "This Land Is Your Land" uh, by Woody Guthrie. Uh, it's the opening song in our first album, and uh, it's a it's a very important song for me as um, uh, you know. Not to get too political, but <laughs> but it's important to know that that this is this land that I chose to live in. Um, it's mine too, and it belongs to all of us. Um, so, yeah, sing along in English or in Spanish, um, and um, see you next time. <laughs>
Bravo! Bravo! Ladies and gentlemen, senores and senores, Maestra Sonia de los Santos, muchas gracias, mi amiga, muchas, muchas gracias. Uh, muchas gracias a todas. And uh, have a wonderful evening. Thanks for joining us on this um, broadcast. And uh, again, thanks for watching the Quarantine Concert Series. Check out Sonia. She's an amazing artist. And thank you for joining us. Thank you so much, Kavir. Thank you for everyone who joined today. Uh, stay tuned. There's going to be um, more things going on from my way. And make sure you tune in tomorrow at 10 p.m., right? We're doing this tomorrow. You got it. Matt Mayer. Yes. We need to get back to the piano. Yeah. All right. So, Take it. See you next time. Yeah, bye bye. <laughs> Gracias. Gracias. Friends on Instagram, who you are, if you are there still, I want to thank you so much for joining us. Um, thanks for sticking sticking around. Thanks for uh, for all the messages. I'm gonna grab the phone and look at all of them. Uh, see you soon. Stay connected and um, hope you're. Uh, Riding this wave the best, the best you can. Gracias. Adios. <laughs>